long ago in a land far, far away. Okay, it was a few years back in Orlando. I worked with a lady who was one of my favorite telephone receptionists ever. Her name was Betty, and she had this smoky, sing-songy phone voice that people absolutely loved. Thank you for calling Massey Cadillac. This is Betty. How may I direct your call? That's a poor effort, but it gives it the idea of how she sounded. I mean, I would answer a page to pick up a call for me, and people would say things like, Dude, you got to introduce me to Betty. Or, Why didn't Betty answer? Is she okay? <laughs> she had a wonderful phone voice, to be sure, but there were several other things Betty did very well. Stick around, because that's where we're going next. I'm John Quaddy, The 5-Minute Coach. Today we're going to discuss some key points that make up what I call the Betty Factor. The intangible difference you can make on your company's business just by doing a few things well when answering the telephone. Some of them may be obvious, others less so, but they all make a difference when you're speaking with clients and potential clients who call your business. Here's the first one. Understand that the only sense people use when they speak with you on the phone is their sense of hearing. Maybe someday every phone will take place via video, I sure hope not, but until then, hearing is where it's at. Just as we said in the overview class, everything we discuss in this segment has to do with making sure the caller hears what we want them to hear. Next, and despite what I just said about targeting the caller's sense of hearing, you have to smile. There's an old saying, a smile can be heard over the phone, and it absolutely can. On my desk, I used to have a five by seven inch mirror on a stand right next to my phone, so I could check to make sure my smile was working before I ever picked up a call. And yes, you sort of feel like an idiot checking yourself out in the mirror, but it really worked. Give it a shot. An added plus is you'll be able to check if you have anything stuck in your teeth after lunch. Third on our list, slow your pace. One of the most common issues with telephone receptionists is the tendency to answer the phone quickly, especially if they're multitasking, as you often are. Just remember that every caller is an individual and a potential opportunity, so each and every one of them deserves the full treatment. Rushing can be a real problem, and it's intensified when English is a second language for one of both of the or one or both of the parties, or if they just have a general difficulty understanding each other. I just recently took my truck in for service because I had a leak in one of the tires. I called a shop right down the road from me, and a young lady answered. Good morning, Thomas. This is Dev. How may I help you? Yes, I had to practice that several times. I actually called back again to confirm the appointment time, and guess what? She answered the same way that time too. Good morning, Thomas. This is Dev. How may I help you? When I took the truck in, and I'm really not exaggerating, when I took the truck in, she greeted me at the counter. Her name tag said Desiree. I never would have guessed that from the phone call. Slow down. I used to work for a guy who owned several car dealerships because he had so many of them and they were pretty spread out. He would call each of his general managers at least once a day. And he would use the main phone number rather than my cell phone because he wanted to hear how the receptionists were handling inbound calls. We had more than one conversation when his call was not answered the way he wanted it to be. So the best advice I can give is this, pretend every phone call is from the owner because it might be. Next, be sure to minimize hold times. You have to manage the call after sending it to an extension or placing it in transfer mode. Most systems have an auto ring back function, but regardless, anything longer than 30 seconds seems like a long time to a caller. 
I once did a face-to-face -face seminar on that very topic, and I asked all the participants to stand up. About 20 people were in the room, and then I asked them to sit down when they thought one minute had passed, without counting or without looking at their watches. What do you think happened? Well, over half the class was sitting by the time 35 seconds rolled around, and everyone was seated at the 50-second mark. The point? A minute seems a lot longer when you're waiting for something, and it's exactly that way on the telephone. Okay, I'm going to finish up by getting on my soapbox just for a minute. No one, perhaps apart from another phone receptionist, speaks with more customers than you do. And some receptionists have to deal with a mix of both telephone and in-person clients, which makes the job doubly difficult because you have to instantly switch gears. But the main idea I want you to walk away with today is that you are infinitely important to your business. No doubt that Betty would agree because as she proved time and again, every time you pick up the call, you are the voice of the business. So don't be anxious about it, embrace it, or as Betty would say, embrace it. <laughs> okay, let's take a quick look at our KLPs or key learning points for this course. Number one, use your smile, but remember callers can only go by what they hear. Two, slow down, including when you give your name. Number three, Pretend every call is from the boss. Number four, minimize hold times wherever possible. And number five, remember that you are the voice of the business. And that is it for this episode of The 5-Minute Coach. I'm John Quaddy. See you next time.